and uh, this is the GoGN uh, uh, first Wednesday of the month webinar and um, the subject today is the OER world map as a tool for scientists and um, presenting for us is uh, Jan Neumann uh, from HBZ uh, who's the project lead and um, after he's given us um, a talk and a bit of a demonstration then we're going to have a bit of a discussion uh, at the end. Uh, over to you Jan. Great, thanks very much Rob. Um, good to be here today to talk to you about the OER World Map project, um, especially as a tool for um, scientists. Um, uh, this is a perspective which um, was not necessarily in the center of um, the OER World Map development yet, but nevertheless I consider it very important one, a very important um, perspective and so this is a short overview of uh, what we are talking today about. Um, I'm going to give you a short overview of the OER World Map platform as it is today and then we step um, into um, some thoughts which are directly addressing the needs of scientists. Uh, I did some slides here and um, finally when all this is done, we can still join in uh, for some discussion or questions. Anyway, if you have any questions, you can simply jump in and um, ask me something. Um, so, um, what is the OER world map? Um, actually, we, we uh, thought long and, and very hard about this question and um, uh, very often we are being asked um, why we chose a map for, for this platform and actually the answer is that um, this was uh, written in the ULIT proposal and we simply accepted it and um, so we, we thought about it and we, we came to the um, decision that um, actually a map might not be the best um, best tool for this and that it's more more in the first hand a directory, a directory of the um, global education movement. So the map is just visualizing the data which is collected in the directory and um, so we, we, we think, um, I still think that it's a good picture, good metaphor of, of um, showing uh, that uh, all the activity uh, which is going on. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, at its core more directory than a map. And what we are currently um, collecting are persons, organizations, uh, services, projects and events. So um, we, we have actors and activities. Um, so we have on the one hand the actors like uh, the organizations and the persons and um, we have um, services which are for instance um, repositories or other stuff um, and um, we have um, projects um, which are very often aiming at developing services. So this is a little bit tricky here to see. We, we have an organization, an organization drives a service and it also can drive a project and the project is aimed at developing a service or something else. We have furthermore events and we have stories uh, on the map right now, which is quite interesting and what we are going to come back uh, later. Um, and this model is not um, closed, so it, it might be uh, extended in the future and we, we thought about including other um, data types like um, policies, this is for sure a very interesting one, um, like, like resources, this was another question we have been asked very much, where are the resources and uh, so we, we are focusing actually on the infrastructure, on the, um, on the organizational framing of, of the OER movement and until now it's not possible to, to upload any resources themselves, so this might change in the future but um, at the moment um, it's not included. Um, other things which could be included in the future might be practices. So we, we have been working with the Open Educational Practices um, project in, in Scotland and um, so this is very interesting as well. Um, just to give you a short impression of the data model, so this is an old version and um, I, I guess it's a bit confusing <coughs> um, but the most important thing to grasp here is um, 
that the model um, exists uh, of agents, so actors who are going to um, do something in the world of OER, which could be either persons or institutions, I said this, and an agent can run a service or a project um, or um, an event. So these are the main things. So um, for, for the data model, um, it means if you're directly into um, collecting data on the OER world map, um, that you first have to enter an agent, um, then later on enter a service and then connect the two of them. And um, this is a little bit tricky and also it's sometimes tricky to, to distinguish between projects and services. Um, when does a project become a service? So at the moment, the OER world map is as a project, but we have already a service um, installed, so it could be included as a service as well. This is one of the many questions of doing clear distinctions, which are sometimes difficult to do. Um, anyhow, um, let's proceed. Um, again, what is the OER world map? Um, we said from a functional point of view, it's a directory of the um, open education world. Um, let's have a little bit more technical view on this. Um, we, we really thought long about it and finally came, we came up with the answer. Yeah, we have to admit it's kind of a wiki. So at, at the very core of the platform is a structured wiki. So um, it's a wiki which aims at collecting data. Um, but it's not a usual wiki, uh, but, but a hybrid system which includes other um, elements of other system types as well. Um, for sure, there's, uh, there are elements of a geo-information system by using the map. Um, and there's also elements of an educational management information system, AMIS. Uh, we found this to be very interesting. These are systems which are being developed, uh, e.g. by UNESCO, to collect data on the state of educational systems. Um, and it also contains elements of a, of a library catalog. So it's a, it's a kind of, of system, Zui Generis, um, but at the core, it's a wiki. Um, just to summarize um, these th thoughts a bit, um, the, the OER world map is a special type of wiki, we said. Um, it provides geographic and other visualization of the data. So data visualization is an important part of um, the platform. Um, it also in allows to include narrative text. I think we haven't spoken about this in detail, but I will show you examples later on. So this is a very interesting thing, which I think is especially interesting or should be interesting for scientists. Um, and um, as soon as you have included narrative text, um, then you can uh, link it to the data which is included in the wiki. Um, and it also allows automatic data imports. So when we, we started uh, to collect the data, we were not sure where from we would get the data and if we would had to input everything manually or if we could import data. And we, we imported some data sets like um, the membership data of the Open Education Consortia. And um, so this might be interesting in the future as well. For instance, uh, Spark is building a new platform to collect data about um, Spark memberships. And, and this might be very interesting data for us to import as well. And this makes for sure um, getting the data much easier for us. Um, on the other hand, you can also export the data. So it's it's built um, that uh, it's designed in a way that you can get the data very much, very easy out of the system. So we we are close to publishing a first documented version of our API. Um, all this is uh, all the development is going on in the background, and um, so but we we are close to publish the API um, and then everyone else can reuse the data, um, ideally uh, in, a, in a very fast um, 
way so that you can build other services on top of the world map. And um, the idea here is that you should also be able to reuse the data in other websites. So um, the, the data we are collecting here is very important for, uh, for, for teachers. It might be, for instance, it might be very interesting. But we said, okay, the, there's hardly a chance that, that we as a, uh, as a project will be able to get in contact to all the teachers in the different countries. And so we, from the beginning and on, thought that it might be a good idea to uh, provide the possibilities that other platforms who are already in, in contact contact with the local um, teacher community can import our data and, and give it to the teachers. So this is more an idea of a business-to-business -business platform. So. Um, and finally, that's uh, one, one point I, I would like to make here is that it's defined for both volunteers and government users. So what, what do we mean with this? Um, if you look at um, OER, it's, it's typically a, a bottom-up movement. So uh, we have grassroots which uh, work on uh, with a very special culture of uh, participation and openness and um, um, so, um, and, and what happens now is that, that governments step into the topic and, and we, we are all discussing very much about policies which are typically uh, governmental um, tools and um, so, so we have two very different forms of, of cultures and, and people coming here together. And we, we said we would like to, to build um, the OER world map in a way um, that it addresses both bottom-up and top-down approaches. Um, one example for this is that um, Germany recently um, started its, its first main OER program. So it's already on the map and I'm going to show you an the example later. And um, part of this program is that um, we will uh, develop an OER information site, a central website uh, with information on OER. And um, within this website, the OER world map will be included as an um, OER Germany map. And we, we also got an editor who's working uh, on, on collecting data and documenting it on the map. So this, in, in my from my perspective, would be a uh, top-down approach. Um, on the other hand, um, we, we think that it should be open for everyone who wants to step into it and, and use it. Um, so this is a there's some tension in it, and it might bring us for some to some challenges in the future. Um, but this is actually what we are moving or directing at to to get both of these groups included in the project. Um, some goals, why are we uh, doing this? We have, uh, Rob named it Big Lyrics, I, I liked it. Uh, so our goal is to accelerate the development of the global OER movement by strengthening the ability of the OER community to organize itself. So, um, this might be, um, yeah, sounds a little bit pathetic, but uh, we, we didn't find any other words to put it. Or, more simpler words. Uh, what do we mean with it? it? It's something like a like a meta platform. So it's it's helps uh, the the. If you look at a um, at a corporation, they have project management tools. Um, they they have um, calendars and all other stuff to to organize themselves, and this is normally restricted to to an institution. So normally these tools end at the border of an institution, and our idea was um, that it would be great if we could provide some of this functionality to a um, distributed community which works in different countries uh, on different topics, different projects. But we should be able to aggregate all the information so that um, people who start working in the field of OER can have a look at uh, this database and see if there's a 
important information for them in there um, so that they can organize themselves a little bit better. So they can see, okay, there has been a similar project than I'm doing right now some years ago in the UK. So can, I can go over there, see what their outcomes were, see if they can find someone who worked on that project and um, maybe to learn something from them. Um, to make it a little bit more um, concrete, here are some practical implications uh, of the goals we are try aiming at with the OER world map. Um, actually, one of the <clears throat> of the challenges of the project is that um, its scope is so huge. So it's a very basic data set, and you can do lots of things with this um, data. And um, from the beginning on, we 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 defined. Um, three main epics, three main user stories. And the first one was that uh, we said, OK, we want a list of um, OES um, repositories, um, which can be used um, for finding OER or for the development of OER search engines. So the idea here is that um, in order to develop a search engine, you need a list of sources. OER World Map provides you uh, with the sources, ideally with uh, links to the API of the uh, repository and then if you want to set up a, <clears throat> a search engine you can simply go to OER world map say I want uh, to find any um, sources which um, include resources on mathematics for the secondary um, sector and then you find a list of these resources and then you find the, the links to the APIs and can set up your search engine. Um, so it's preparing this kind of stuff. Um, then equally or even more important is that we said, OK, we want to connect projects and experts with each other so that they that we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time, but uh, can can share our experiences, not only on our resources, but also our experiences and know how. Um, a, a third um, major epic was about the provision of reliable statistics. So we said, um, if we're collecting all this data anyway, we can start making um, statistics out of it because um, at the moment there is very little material available. So. Um, Yes, um, and and we think that these kinds of statistics would be very helpful um, to support policymakers in making um, policies in favor of OER. And um, <clears throat> then we have some some more minor things here. We have we experts can be found very easily within the database. That's very close to the connecting thing with the projects. Um, we are working on the provision of a calendar at the moment. So if, if you're looking on the world map right now, you can click on the um, event icon and then automatically our calendar opens. It's still online or only available at the moment via the platform, but as once as you has, have this data available, it's very easy, for instance, to develop a uh, a Google Calendar which can be shared so that everyone who's working on OER can have all these um, events in his, his in his uh, mobile phone. So and then, so you don't miss uh, an OER uh, date or event again. Um, Last but not least, um, I, I had an, we, we had another idea of, of um, not only collecting all, all, all this data, but also um, focusing, finding out what are the most important uh, projects uh, in the field of OER. So um, at the moment, there are consultations going on for the second OER World Congress. And the situation is uh, that, that there's still a big need to find really good um, settled um, projects or services which have proven to work so that you can say to a country which is new to OER, look here, this is a shining example of, of OER in practice. Uh, go there, have a look, and um, then uh, yeah, imitate it or adapt it to your needs, and, um, but go in this direction so that uh, some orientation is provided. Um, this is only part of the implications, as I said. Um, it's a very basic set of data, so um, 
normally, um, if, if you start thinking about it, it comes very easily to finding other ideas as well. Um, I'm moving on. Um, two examples here. Um, I'm not sure, maybe, shall we try to share the screen here? Um, this is um, going down here. No. This was wrong. Okay, so you need to click on where it says close presentation in the red box. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Desktop here, it comes. Um, so here comes <clears throat> my screen. Can you see it? Yep. Yes. Bad not. So just uh, two examples to show you what, what what we have just spoken about. Um, if I yeah OER info <coughs> Richtlinie that's German and then I get here I, I find the entry of the OER program. Um, just to give you an example how the logic of the data works and so here I find now. Um, the description of the program, um, it's shown in, in German here because uh, we, we have only the German description in here. Um, in case we had an English description as well, we could have added it to the map. So um, any user who had English as his um, browser language would then um, see an English description. And if you go down now here, <clears throat> you find all the projects which are part of, of this program. Um, and um, then you can go to another, can choose of the project, can choose one of the projects. And the cool thing here is again, um, you, you see the um, description of the project, but you also see the participants of the projects here. So there's a there's a chain of, of links which can link um, the, the program to the participant of the single project. And this means if, if anyone um, uh, from, from outside uh, wants to have a look at the German OER program, he can go here and not only find the project, but also direct people to call. And um, we, we could expand this idea, for instance, to policies. So if you had um, policies included in the world map, you could see um, which projects came out of um, this policy. And um, maybe in the future, we can even get automatically some information about the number of resources which are produ produced um, as a result of a policy. And I think this would. Um, yeah, give lots of evidence and, and make discussion much more concrete. So this is one example. Uh, another example, which is a um, little bit uh, lighter, is just to show you an event. Reach consultation. So we have here at the moment, uh, two of the regional consultations online here. This is uh, the meeting which took place in, in Malta uh, last week to prepare the second UNESCO World Congress. And um, this was just uh, an attempt to, to see um, how we can document these meetings. And um, as you can see here again, you can see uh, who was uh, on this uh, meeting. So from the UK, here was uh, Joe Wilson from Scotland here. Um, so if you would be interested in, in the outcomes of these meetings, you could simply go over and contact Joe. Um, anyhow, you also could attach outcomes of the meeting. So publications of um, the meeting should be found here as soon as they are published so that all these processes become a little bit uh, more clear and transparent. So I'm going back to the 
um, to my presentation. Mm. Okay, started it from the beginning again, but that's not a big problem. Just have to go ahead a little bit. So we're coming to to the second part of the uh, of the presentation of the webinar today. Any questions uh, until this point? No. Okay, then then let's go on. And um, so what follows now is just some ideas I made myself. So I'm I'm not a real scientist myself. Um, but um, I, I work for a scientific library um, service provider, so I've got some ideas what science is all about. And um, let's see what um, the, the, o, the OER world map could be used for, for scientists. And um, so the first point I, I want to make is that for sure it provides a lot of primary data. So um, especially in the humanities, but also in, in social sciences, uh, political sciences, and, and all this stuff. Um, when you look at the development of OER policy making, um, one of the problems is uh, that at the moment it's very difficult to, to get primary data. So you normally have to do your own surveys. And um, here the, the OER world map should be able to develop or to deliver some primary data which can be used instantly and which uh, should ideally be updated automatically. So um, I, I think it's, a, it's an important set of, of primary data. Um, and as I said before, the, the data can be exported or will be able to, uh, can be exported via the API very soon. Um, so everyone can download the data and then put it in their own um, anal um, statistics tool. I, I just uh, licensed um, Tableau, but I did not have any time to look at it. Um, we, we are also having um, and some included statistic modules. Um, so if, if you go to the um, OER world map to the home page and, and uh, you see at the um, top left corner there are some orange uh, circles and within the second one from the right um, that's uh, the way to, to enter our statistics. Um, this is not very sophisticated at the moment, but um, we will put quite some energy in this to develop it in the future. Um, and um, what what would be very interesting for us would be to see what, what statistics you would need. So if you have any ideas uh, what kind of information you would need for your research to get out of the OER world map, um, this would be very helpful for us. So we, we did something uh, like this last year in Germany um, for the OER Atlas. So we had things like distribution of um, OER um, in, in different educational sectors, uh, the use of licenses. Uh, this is included in the OER world map as well. So um, there are many questions, but uh, we would be very interested to learn from you what, what kind of statistics you would need. So if you have any ideas, just type it into the chat or send us a, a mail. Um, so what we have here, the, the second uh, thing here is uh, the idea of, of using the OER world map as a reference system. So um, everything you see here is um, or on the world map is linked open data. So one of the, the big advantages of, of this technology is that every entry becomes a single unique identifier. So we have one fixed point where we can attach all the information to. And um, so we, we think that this might be a very powerful opportunity uh, to organize um, our knowledge and um, our publications and, and other stuffs. Um, so, um, and, and um, this can come to practical results in, in, in different forms. Um, one of the points is uh, 
um, are the country reports we have already implemented on, on the world map. So if you go and to the world map and just click on Sweden, um, you will see there uh, there's a link to a country report. So this is a narrative we have included in the world map. So we have stories as well. And um, the idea is that we could from there from this narrative um, linked to the data which is underlying and by doing so I, I guess we can give much more robust and re reliable um, reports so at the moment it's it's when you get a country report it's more snapshot uh, one moment and then two years later you get another one and it might be completely different from the last one and if, if you connect it to underlying to an underlying database um, I, I think uh, the, the report gets much more convincing and um, um, it, it also becomes more helpful because you can directly link to uh, or click to uh, the the single projects which are included in, in the pro in, in the narrative in the report um, another example which we have not yet um, put into practice is the idea of developing an OER handbook so um, my idea was that um, it would be great um, maybe for the UNESCO chairs or whoever wants to do it um, to to write uh, collaboratively an OER handbook and um, to uh, include OER world map data uh, as an underlying database in this book and for instance if you include something like a like a search command in, in this like show me show here all the data which relates to textbooks in the United States um, then you would have a, a book which um, updates itself automatically so as soon as new data is put to the map the map where the data will be updated in the book as well so I, I think this might be a very very interesting idea of um, connecting narratives with um, with data which is included in the world map so the data is always very good but um, for most people it's easier if they get some narrative explainment uh, expla explanations um, and then to connect it with explanations um, last point uh, which is very similar uh, we, we also discussed that it would be great to have something like a WordPress plugin. So uh, imagine all the people who are blogging about OER um, could link very precisely to uh, an institution they are referring to. So um, to make sure that um, um, that that they um, yeah that that there's no misunderstanding concerning the institution they are meaning, and um, also I think it would be great if if um, the the if we had a bi-directional uh, um, uh, relationship so that when you click on on a project on the OER world map you can see all the blog posts which um, have been written about it so this is still um, music of the future but nevertheless I think it's it's I, I found these ideas um, fascinating and I think that we, we can create an ecosystem of, of information which is very finely organized and therefore will be very convincing um, in, in the sense of, of convincing policymakers in order to, to go in, in the direction of OER. Um, Another idea which goes in the direction of um, the OER world map as a reference system is that um, I, I, as a, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a librarian myself, but I'm, I'm working for a library organization, so I would love to see the data included in the world map uh, with an OER bibliography. So, um, again, here the, the, the idea is very similar. Um, and it means that you can um, very easily find uh, from an entry of the world map um, the, the stuff which has been written about it. Um, so this would mean um, yeah, connecting the world map with an OER bibliography. I'm not sure if it's possible and how much work it will be, but um, I'm, I'm optimistic and we will keep uh, thinking in this direction.
last but not least, but I think I'm going to skip it here, is the idea that the data included in the world map can be used as kind of um, authority data, which is quite important um, for libraries. And um, since we are um, going here into new ways, I'm, I'm not sure if the um, existing uh, catalogs of authority data uh, are sufficient. And, and maybe here um, the OER world map can step in and provide additional authority data. Um, well, that's the second idea, um, the OER as a reference system. So, can I move on? Yeah, okay. Um, but what, now we're coming to a point which I, I like very much personally. Um, it's not only a tool which um, can help scientists, um, it's, it's also a, a learning opportunity itself. So um, you, you can think of um, the OER world map as an open educational resource itself. It's, um, it's a big, big one, so it's a large-scale open educational resource, but um, I, I think it um, applies to all the uh, elements of the definition, so it's openly licensed, and um, yeah, it's, it's made uh, in order to support learning as well. Um, so what I found very uh, rewarding when I used the OER world map is that you have to start thinking about um, um, finding very clear distinctions. So is this a project or is it a service? What does it mean? Uh, what, what is an OER service? So we, we are always looking for clear definitions and, and we are getting lots of, of um, uh, real world examples you can look at and and then you can see does it fit my my own definition and and so you can reflect on on the structure of the open education movement um, while, while categorizing it and and I personally found this uh, to be very uh, rewarding so also it's it's yeah, if you do it uh, kind of in a Zen-like attitude, uh, um, it's quite relaxing as well. And and I found that that you really can learn a lot from from working with the OER world map. And um, what what is still amazing and which is um, one of the uh, big um, challenges of the project is um, that that OER and open education is just developing so um, we we still um, the the whole topic is very often ill-defined and and we are lacking good definitions and um, it's very hard to find uh, clear distinctions between different terms and all this stuff and um, this is something we are struggling all the time so and um, I, I just brought you some ideas here um, to to show you um, what what kind of question evolve out of the um, OER world map and and to show you that that um, I think it would be great for us if we had a strong scientific community which would support um, working on these questions so for instance one one question we had at the very beginning was um, what what kind of data should we collect so um, we, we started uh, uh, that that we said okay it's about OER so there should be only uh, open education licensed material on it and um, ideally uh, material which is only licensed and CC BY and CC BY SA and then later on we found out no it's it's not going to work out like this because um, this it's kind of paradox if you have a very strict and and um, close definition uh, if you're working on open education and we found out that there are many many things um, which are um, to be collected on the map which are for instance not really directly connected to the licensing so if, if you look at something uh, of, uh, on a project which um, deals with open education maybe licensing is, is not so important at all and so we said okay we have to be more open on openness and um, I'm thinking here Robert Scoover who uh, we discussed this issue with um, at the beginning and um, so um, but nevertheless the question is what should really be put on the map I would love to have a clear definition on this and um, uh, 
the, the question is not solved uh, at the moment. For instance, just uh, without going too much into detail, um, the question is, when becomes an educational resource and an educational one? So does it mean it has to be developed for um, education or does it mean it can be used for education? So uh, if you argue that um, it's an open educational resource as soon as it can be used for open education, everything uh, can be, uh, yeah, can become an open educational resource and um, then it's it's not an open educational, uh, not an OER world map, but an open content world map. Um, just going on um, to other things, um, as a consequence of this we um, we said, okay, we, we open up our collection scope, but we still want to um, avoid open washing. So we, we think, we, we very much believe in, in the core concept of openness. We believe that licensing is important. We believe that it's important to use open licenses. And we wanted to provide an opportunity to make it very sure that, that this is highlighted. Um, so that, um, that there is a distinction and that, that you can easily find um, material which is um, very openly licensed. And um, so we, we started to develop, develop an openness indicator and um, I guess the time is running so I'm not going to show it to you in detail but um, it's, it's linked from the slide so you should have a look at it. So the idea here is um, that we give um, define certain categories and, and then give every um, service an indicator that you can say, okay, it uses CC by SA uh, licenses, so it gets five points for this. Uh, you do not need to uh, require to, um, to register to, to get to the content and um, it uses, um, uh, it provides an open AP, API and, and has good metadata so on it, so it's, it's an 88 point openness uh, connected to the, um, to the service. Another very interesting question um, is the, the field of activities we have here. Um, the idea here was to, to distinguish into different kinds of, of activity. If you want, um, you see at the moment one of the problems is we have these first level categorization in organizations and persons, services, projects, but this is not granular enough. So I think, in, I would argue that in order to make the uh, browsing easier, we need a, a second level of, of, um, of categories so that you can see um, and, and, and choose maybe um, this is a project which aims at content production or, or this is a project which aims at uh, quality assurance um, or, or this is a project which aims at um, implementing open practices into, into school. Um, again, all the categories are missing more or less. Maybe somebody has written them down somewhere, but um, I'm, I'm not aware or we have not been aware of this before. And we think these are questions which have to, which come out by, by the need of, of categorizing the content. And again, these uh, fields of activities here um, are one example to, to get yeah, a clear categorization of, of activities in the field of OER. Um, more simple thing here were the educational sector, or well, I thought it, it would be simpler, more simpler. Um, I mentioned that it, it would be great to, to say, okay, we have in Germany or in any other country, um, we have a certain number of projects in the field of the school sector or in, in, in the field of higher education. And um, we are using, uh, at the moment, ISCET, ISCED, ISCET, um, categorization for this. So this is the UNESCO categories which have been developed to classify educational um, systems. Um, but we found that um, ISCET is very good in um, as far as, as school and, and higher education is concerned. So in the formal uh, part of the educational sector, but it doesn't provide any categories for um, for non-formal or informal um, education, and also um, I think it's a bit um, 
underdeveloped in the field of, of um, technical and vocational training. So it has a category which um, uh, which is named um, post-secondary non-tertiary education. And um, this is mainly everything which is not included in, in higher education and, and school um, sector. And so it doesn't work out very good there. So we, we, we wanted to have a more simple, more speaking, more easy to understand um, scheme here, which is for instance, like uh, in, in Germany with the OER info site, uh, we are using a stream uh, distinction between um, school, higher education, um, technical and vocational training, and non-formal uh, information. And again, this is a, it's, 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 if you start asking these questions, it, it's really getting confusing very fast. And um, I, I think it's very helpful to think about this stuff. And um, so um, I, I guess you are all pretty smart uh, out there working on your PhD stuff. And um, so if you, if you, get up with some answers to this, I would be very grateful to you. Um, last but not least, I already, already mentioned it, the second navigation, the second level uh, for, for the navigation. So we would love to have subtypes for organization, persons, services, projects, etc. And um, these are all great learning opportunities. And um, just um, one thing which just comes to my mind um, is uh, we it's not collected on individual learning. For sure, it, it, it can be uh, open for collective learning as well. So um, we, we haven't included a field like lessons learned for every project, but uh, we will do so very soon so that it's very easy to, to link from a project to its lessons learned. And, and this is exactly what we think what should be transported and what, what we should share with other projects. It's, it's not mainly the information how expensive it was and, and what the risks were, but, but what we learned. By, by this, I think this is a uh, this should be the educational approach towards project management. Well, um, I it took me much longer than expected already till here, so we are coming to the end of the presentation here, and now it comes a little bit more to what you can do directly. So it's it's also a, a potential marketing platform. So at the moment, I think. Um, yeah, um, the, the click, clicks are not so heavy, but um, nevertheless, for sure, you as a scientist um, can add a profile to your um, a personal profile to OER World Map, and you can connect it to GoGen. So GoGen could have a possibility to document its its, its network, the state state of its network. You can also uh, link your profile to your institution and um, to to other projects you are working on, which are on the OER World Map, and you can also add your research project as project. So, so we, we said we, we have been very open from the beginning on. So, so at the moment, um, projects are mainly um, um, institutional ones which aim at developing infrastructure or content or whatever. But this is by no means op obligatory so I think you you will be completely all right if, if a single person adds a project like, like the research project you are doing and out would come a, a list of all the um, research projects we have going on and, and this for sure would be a very helpful thing um, also you can add your block if you have one uh, as a service to OER yeah, world map uh, we, we haven't started to do so but um, I, I think this would be a very good thing as well so I would love to have a list of all the blocks available on OER and open education and as soon as you have done it um, you can uh, tweet about it and say, look here, I've entered OER oh yeah, World Map, you can find my research project there. Please comment and uh, let's learn together. And that's quite the end of the, my presentation and now I, I would like to hand over the word to you guys if, if there are any questions, ideas, um, criticism or whatever. Okay, thanks, Jan. <clears throat> Um, would anyone like to come in with a question at this point? <clears throat> um, we had some interest in the idea of the WordPress plugin. Um, 
a bit earlier. Um, I wonder if anyone has any thoughts about what that would look like, or maybe maybe Jan, you can share some thoughts around that plugin and what's the the idea behind it. Yeah, I mean the idea would be that um, uh, if if you write something in your blog and you mention a project, um, that you could just mark the um, the the. Um, the text and then it would offer you as a drop-down list all the data which is available in the world map so that you can then very precisely say this here refers to the OER info uh, program in Germany and, and link it to there and um, <clears throat> then you would have a very precise link in there and ideally um, I, I would love to see some backlinks as well but I'm, I'm not yet sure how, how this could work but um, I, I think we we could organize our knowledge, the knowledge we, we produce like this in a very precise and, and robust way and um, so if, if we could use this it would be very easy to find all blog posts later on which refer to a certain project or to a certain organizational idea or whatever. Yeah, it's interesting and um, I think also thinking about it in terms of um, a research as a research tool. Uh, already, it's um, quite common for people to use uh, web curation tools to keep track of references and sort of clippings from the uh, web and that kind of thing. Um, so that is one thing WordPress plugins can, can already do. Is you know you would post a press to WordPress, but maybe there's also a way to kind of uh, import content into the map and share it that way as people just find stuff that's interesting um, or stuff that they want to share. <clears throat> yeah, this for sure would be a good idea as well to, to make this easier. Yeah, I agree completely. So we have a question from Michelle here in the chat box. Um, I'll just read it out. Uh, Michelle says, I'm leading an open pedagogy workshop during Open Education Week. I plan to use an open data set to demonstrate how students can use open content to reproduce published analysis of the data set. I like the idea of connecting this exercise to the OER world map. Are there any relatively straightforward studies I could use for this purpose? So um, I'm not sure. Um, I suppose maybe we need to know a little bit more about the kind of data set that you're looking for, uh, Michelle. Um, mm -hmm. One so. one, pos one possibility is the there's the OER Research Hub uh, data, um, which I can share a link to if you just want. Content for your students to experiment with. But as I, uh, I mean, one thing would be to to include just a project and say, look here, this is the project I did, and um, I, I um, therefore develop this kind of data and then link to it. But um, for sure, it would be interesting to have a more close integration with the data. But I, I agree with you, Rob. It would be. Yeah, we, we would need more um, information about the data here. Okay. Um, so we're into the last few minutes now. Um, so does anyone else have any questions that they want to ask? It's quite a lot to take in, especially the stuff around the openness indicator and the field of activities. Is, uh, a lot of thought has gone into producing these kind of categories. It takes a long time to process it, I think. Um, but if you do have any questions, then you should contact the project team. Um, the, uh, the contact details are on the website. Yes. Um, we, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, we we are very open. So in. Maybe if you uh, have some ideas later on uh, tonight when you're drinking a glass of wine, reflecting on what you heard today, and um, we, we are very happy to hear from you and, and, and get your ideas. Also, I would like to encourage you to um, register, and um, I'm not sure if you will get editing rights automatically. We are just uh, about to implement this, so at the moment it's still that you have to ask for editing rights. Rights, but you will get instantly 
um, so that you can start mapping. And I, I would recommend just try it out and, and see how it works. And um, I think it's a it, it's a really important project. It's a, a huge opportunity for the open education um, community as such. And um, I, I would love to to. Yeah, to, to cooperate more with scientists uh, on, on these kind of questions. That's great. Thanks very much, Jan. And um, there's plenty of food for thought in there. Um, I suppose uh, Randy asked in the chat box, will a recording of this webinar be available? The answer is yes, it will. Um, if you check the uh, GoGN website, there's an uh, archive of all the uh, previous webinars as well. Uh, which you're welcome to share. They're all openly licensed. Um, so it just remains for me to say um, thank you for everyone uh, to everyone for, for coming and attending today. Um, those of you who will be in uh, Cape Town um, next week for the uh, GoGN workshop and the OE, uh, OE Global Conference, um, we'll be seeing you there. Um, and in the meantime, um, Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.